All right, today's lesson will be over learning styles. What are learning styles? Information enters your brain three main ways. That is sight, hearing, and touch. Which one you use the most is called your learning style. Visual learners, they learn by sight. Auditory learners, they learn by hearing. Tactile learners, which is also called kinesthetic, they learn by touch. Visual learners, they want to see things in order to learn. They prefer to see information such as pictures, diagrams, cartoons, and demonstrations. Picture words and concepts they hear as images and they're easily distracted in a lecture with no visual aids. They're overwhelmed with intense visuals accompanied by lectures. Visual learners generally benefit from using charts, maps, notes, and flashcards when studying. Auditory learners. They use their ears to learn. They prefer to hear information spoken. They can absorb a lecture with little effort. They may not need careful notes to learn. They often avoid eye contact in order to concentrate. They may read aloud to themselves. I do that a lot. They like background music when they study. Not so much for me, but I can focus and concentrate. So I'm mostly an auditory learner. They want to hear it. Your next learning style is tactile or kinesthetic learners. Tactile learners, they prefer to touch as their primary mode for taking in information. In traditional lecture situations, they should write out important facts, create study sheets connected to vivid examples, and role playing can help them learn and remember important ideas. Last year, my students that were tactile learners, I had a lot in my fourth period class, and they like to create plays, court role plays, according to what we were reading. So whatever the story was, they would create a play, write down lines and everything, and act it out in class. And they really, retain a lot of information that way. And they may also benefit by using manip manipulatives, which means things like pencils, uh, whiteboards, um, even iPads and iPhones, because you have to touch and feel every everything to make things happen with, with those things. So that's what a manipulative is. They want to experience whatever they're doing in order to learn. Your intelligence profile was created by someone called Howard Gardner, that was a psychologist. It's a theory of multiple intelligences, suggesting abilities seem to cluster in eight different areas. Verbal, linguistic skills, logical mathematical skills, bodily kinesthetic skills, visual spatial skills, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal abilities, musical abilities, and natural listic abilities. So I guess everybody would kind of understand the verbal, logical, and bodily. But anyway, we'll just talk about it. Verbal is like how well you speak, how fluid you are with your, your speech. Logical is about how concrete your thinking is. The, do things make sense? Some people are very highly skilled at thinking through something in a make sense way and bodily kinesthetic skills, that would be your athletes. People who are considered a genius in their kinesthetic skills, be like basketball players, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, um, what's this other guy, Tom Brady. These will all be considered geniuses 
and kinesthetic skills. Visual spatial skills, that would be an artist, somebody who's very well at, does very well at painting or drawing and things like that. That would be, they would be considered a genius in their visual spatial skills. Interpersonal abilities go along with people who can communicate very well and relate to people at the same time. Somebody that can make friends very well with somebody else. They will be considered an interpersonal genius. Intrapersonal abilities, that's one of my strong points, is being able to reflect about myself. I'm someone with intrapersonal genius. They know a lot about themselves. Um, whenever you ask them something, why did you do that? They'll never tell you, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I just did it. This person knows why they do everything that they do. Musical abilities, um, that's kind of self-explanatory. A genius would be somebody who very does very well with a musical instrument or even singing. Your voice is also an instrument of music. Naturalistic abilities is someone who um, does well with like uh, nature. They just commune with nature very well. They may know how to grow plants or something just naturally inclined. You might call that having a green thumb if you know how to grow things very well or plant trees or climb trees even. Uh, well, that would have more to do with the kinesthetic, but you get my point. Extroversion versus introversion. This is called a social orientation. Extroverts. Extroverts are people who like talking with others and taking action. I'm not very extroverted. Um, although I do talk a lot, but it's mostly because of my job. Um, and I do take a lot of action. It's just a personality type that's outside of being an extrovert. They prefer active learning and group projects. Introverts, on the other hand, which I am, you prefer to have others do the talking most of the time, outside of my work anyway. Prefer lectures and structured tasks. I like a lot of structure in my life and work. Thinking and feeling, decision making. Some people make decisions based off their thoughts. And some people make decisions based off their feelings. Thinkers, like myself, they like to take an objective approach and emphasize logic and analysis in their decisions. So objective means something concrete, concrete, like you can see it. Like I have this pencil or this pen in front of me. It can't be argued that I don't have a pen in my hand. Um, and People who are thinkers, they, they don't like to deal with emotion a whole lot because they, they like to have something that's very real and in front of them. Not that emotions are not real, but thinkers like to have it concrete. You can't really argue it. It's not an opinion, what they're talking about. They project, they prefer objective feedback and thrive when there's pressure to succeed. So just as they like to um give objectively concrete knowledge they like to receive concrete knowledge as well and they rather not talk on an emotional opinionated basis it's for most thinkers they're going to think it's a waste of time because nobody knows who's right if it's a is it's something based on your opinion and they thrive when there is pressure to succeed uh, a lot of athletes are Thinkers are a lot of business people who are CEOs, head of companies, um, your principals of school systems, your leaders of police forces, stuff like that. They they thrive or they find their their most strong when there's a lot of pressure and there's like a time limit. So they do well in those situations. Aristotle was one of our most famous thinkers and I think it was about a thousand 
maybe even 2,000 years ago, he was around and people still talk about him to this day because how vast his thinking was. Feelers. These people prefer emotion instead of logic. They give greater weight to the impact of relationships in their decisions. So it's kind of like the saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Fillers, they thrive in that type of environment, which is most of the world. They will, they will thrive more because they feel like they fostering a relationship with somebody, even though they may not know as much as the other person knows about a job, but if they know that person, they're more likely to be hired by that person. You got to think about it. Say, for example, if your your brother or sister came to a job um, fair where you worked in, it was your brother who kind of knows the job or somebody who knows the job well, but you don't know him at all. You'll probably hire your brother. And it's some emotion-based thing versus a thinking. Because logically, you should hire the person who knows the job the best. Feelers prefer positive feedback and individual recognition. They like a lot of praise um, for whatever the, it is that they're doing, um, some type of acknowledgement. Judging, perceiving, and achieving goals. Judges. Judges prefer clearly defined strategies to achieve goals a lot like a thinker. They may jump to closure too quickly. They wanna make things over and done with rather fast. They prefer orderliness, structure, and deadlines. My mind is made up, don't confuse me with facts. Perceivers, that's what a perceiver might say. They like to consider all sides to a problem and make may be at some risk for not completing their work. Perceivers are kind of like what you would consider a procrastinator at some, some points because they would take a lot of time because they're trying to know all the ins and outs of a situation before they make a decision. They prefer spontaneity and flexibility. So they're kind of complex in that way because sometimes they'll just do something uh, spontaneously and sometimes they they want to weigh out all their options. So a perceiver is, is going to be slower to make a decision than a judger. Let's think this through. Discover your own learning style. Today, I'm gonna have you guys take a learning test after we learn a little bit more about the learning styles and you will you'll post, uh, submit to me what your actual learning style is and I'll show you that a little later in the class. I want you to think about your favorite classes so far. What do they have in common? What did you like about them? Did you like mastering facts, discussion, or working on your own? Did you like lecture? or pairing or grouping, or hands-on activities. Which one of these things stood out most to you? What did you enjoy the most? How do you think you learn? That's something I want you guys to think about before we even take the quiz. Using knowledge of your learning style. Knowing your learning style, both your strengths and weaknesses, can help you study more effectively. Building strengths across the learning styles. Make the best use of your learning style. Work harder in skills that don't come easily to you. Be flexible and adaptable. Try new things and new ways. Keep growing. Don't be easily satisfied. Remember, no matter what your learning style, it's very important to be involved in class and to participate. Link classroom experience to the outside world. That's a great way to learn. 
relate class concepts to your own life. Another great way to learn. We'll put more of that into our openings of our classes. Ask questions and offer criticism. Stimulate further relevant discussions. Don't get distracted. Stay on task. Keep an open mind. There are many ideas beyond your own. All life is learning. It never stops. All righty. So that is all of your learning styles. And here is the assessment that I took earlier. And I want you guys to take it. That will be your assignment for today. Mm -hmm. And you can do it either today or um, this weekend. I'll grade it, but I don't have any particular timeline. I'll put maybe Tuesday or Wednesday of next week for a due date. But you go to the link that's in eClass, or you can just type in learning styles. It's at educationplanner.org. What's your learning style? And it's 20 questions. And they're pretty simple questions. I'm going to just move through them pretty quickly here so you can have an idea of what to do and what it's all about. So it's going to ask you all these different questions to determine what your learning style is and do your best to answer them as truthfully for you as possible so you have a really good idea of what your learning style is and I will as well. And I can better craft my lessons to help you learn better. So I'm gonna go through all these and at the end, it's gonna tell me what my percentages are of what kind of learner I am. Now I'm not really paying attention, so I'm just doing this fast so I can get through to the end to show you what I want from you to do. So I need you guys to actually pay attention to what you're reading and so you can have a good idea of what your true learning style is. Okay, so according to my mock learning style that I didn't pay much attention to right here, I am mostly an auditory learner, which is true, even though I wasn't paying attention. And it's saying that I'm 65% auditory, 15% visual, and 20% tactile. So the bulk of what I need to be doing when I'm studying or learning, I need to be in the auditory space. I need to follow these tips here at the bottom that it has. Okay, everybody, that is the ELA lesson of the day.